Hello and welcome to the second session on sorting and searching. We're going to talk about improved sorts today. Now all the algorithms we saw the last time have a fatal flaw. What is the flaw? All executed in n squared time. And what's the meaning of n squared time? It means that the time taken to execute the algorithms we saw the last time would always be a multiple of the square of the number of elements. And that's not ideal because if you think about it, as the number of elements increases, right, the time taken to complete the sorting of those elements would be exponentially longer. In fact, there are real world stories of a sort actually taking three days to be completed. You can't have something like that. What then is the solution? So you may hear a solution saying, write the code in assembly language but that's not going to sort out the issue right unless of course we have a better algorithm right also remember that as a rule of thumb if the code does not run fast enough when written in c it's not going to be fast enough when written in assembly it's all about the algorithm so let's look at a different algorithm. We're talking now about the shell sort. This particular algorithm is named after its inventor, DL shell, is derived from the insertion sort method based on diminishing increments. Now, what's the meaning of diminishing increments? For that, we will need to understand how the shell sort works. So see, for example, we have data like this, which needs to be sorted. What we do at the start is we establish a gap value. Now this gap value can be determined, for example, by taking the number of elements, dividing that by two. So here we have six elements, divide that by two, you get three and you can use that as the gap. And so what we will do is we will check every third element. So we will check zeroth element with the element that has the index 3 we will check the first element or the element with index 1 with the element that has index 4 and then element with index 2 with the element that has index 5 in the first pass and we will end up with some swapping right so f and c will be swapped D and B will be swapped, but A and E will remain in place because A is less than E and we are sorting in alphabetical order. Now in pass 2, what we will do is we will reduce that gap to 2. So we will now check every second element, which means we check the element at index 0 with the element at index 2, the element at index 1 with the element at index Three, and the element at index 2 with the element at index 4 and element at index 3 with the element at index 5 and again some swapping will be done and so we'll end up with the data like this right you can see a and c is swapped and then e and f is swapped now we will reduce the gap to 1 which means we check adjacent elements so a and b b and c C and E, E and D, D and F, right? Now what will happen is just D and E will be swapped, which means we now have our sorted data. Okay, so that's how the shell sort works. How do we write the code for the algorithm? For that, what does the outcome need to be? We know we need the data to be sorted in alphabetical order or in ascending order, what do we know about the design of the algorithm? So we've just seen how the shell sort works and we've got to incorporate that design into our code. How will the logic flow? To understand that, let's look at a visual. So here we have different elements. We've got numbers. They're a string of numbers. So the first initial data, as you can see, is 95321. Now we've got to establish the gap value. So here, since there are five elements, five divided by two will give us a quotient of two, but we will have a remainder as well. 
right? So if the division leaves us with a remainder, we will increase that gap value by 1, right? So in this case, again, the gap will be 3. And so we will compare the zeroth element with the element with index 3. And so we'll have a swapping happen there. And then we'll compare the element with index 1 with the element with index 4, right? And swapping will happen there as well. Now, when we need to check this element with the next element, which is 3 away, which is now going to lead to a null. So we can't do that. So in our code, we need to take care of this situation, wherein the index we are now talking about, if we add the gap, should not go beyond the array. Right? So that we'll incorporate into the code. And so this will be the end of sorting of every third element. So we have the data like this. Now we reduce the gap to 2, which means we check every second element. So 0 with element at index 2, 1 with element at index 3, 2 with element at index 4. And you will see for each of those, there will be no swapping done. Right? Because we are checking 2 with 3. 2 is less than 3, so that's already sorted. 1 and 9 is already sorted, 3 and 5 is already sorted, right? So at the end of sorting for every second element, we will have the same string of numbers as we had after that first pass. Now we reduce the gap to 1. So we will check 2 against 1, so swapping will happen there, right? Then we check 2 against 3, no swapping there. 3 against 9, no swapping there. And 9 versus 5, again that will be swapped. And that's how we arrive at the sorted data. Now I hope you've understood how this works. Let's go ahead and write the code. We'll start a new file. Hashtag include stdio.h Hashtag include stdlib.h hashtag include string.h and now we have our function declared shell sort and the parameters will be char star item and int count count being the length of the string or the array main function and here we have char num equal to 95321 and then we have int len equal to str len of num and then we'll call the function Passing in the arguments num and len. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put in many printf statements just for your reference. You can remove them later on once you've understood how the code works. I'm going to put in here the first one. So that on the output screen we can better understand how the code works. Right? After we call the function, we just need to print the sorted data. So printf and exit with exit success. Now we define our function. And we pass in parameters. Now here we have int gap and we'll have rem for remainder equal to count percentage 2 if rem is greater than 0 then gap equal to count 
divided by 2 plus 1. Else, gap equal to count divided by 2. Okay. And we need a car temp. And we can put that up here itself. And temp will be used to help us to swap. We need a few more integers. I'm going to put those here. Comma i, comma g, which will be initialized to 0. Now, some printf statements. And here we say printf, comma, gap. Yeah. Okay. Then we start our iteration. So for i equal to gap, i greater than 0, i minus minus. Okay, and within this loop, we'll have a printf statement first. Now we'll have a second iteration. So for j equal to 0, and although we've initialized it first, we will need to have it become 0 again every time this outer loop executes. So for j equal to 0, j less than count, and Remember, we need to take care of j plus gap being less than count. Right? So that's our second condition. And then j plus plus. Now within this inner loop, first of all, we will print f. Right? And we'll also print the value of gap. Now we'll say if item of j is greater than item of j plus gap. Right? So the first time it will be the zeroth element or the element at the zeroth position versus the element at the third position, for example. Right? If the gap is 3, then we will now print, again this printf is just for reference as I said, right, and here we will do the swap now, so temp equal to item of j and item of j equal to item of j plus gap right and item of j plus gap equal to temp right then after this we will print f again for reference and after this we need to reduce gap, right, for the next iteration. Gap minus minus. That's all. Right, so now let's run this and see the result. Oh, there's a comma there. Right, so let's run this. It's semicolon. Right, so let's look at the output now. So, initially, the array is 95321. Okay, you can, collect, you can correct that spelling. Initial value of gap is 3. Right, because remember there are 5 elements and we discussed this earlier, how we arrive at that 3. i is now 3, j is 0. Gap is 3. Item of j is 9. That's correct, right? 0. And item of j plus gap is 2. Right? 0, 1, 2, 3. 
So after comparison, that will be swapped. Right, you'll have 25391. Right, then G is 1. Gap is 3, of course. Item of G is 5. And G plus gap would be 0, 1, 2, 3, which is 1. Right? And so those will be swapped. So you have 2, 1, 3, 9, 5. Right? Now when it moves to 2, when that is J moves to 2, J plus gap will go beyond the array. And therefore, you see, we are not in that loop anymore. We are now going out to the main loop or the outer loop where i is now 2, right? j is 0. We reduced the gap now to 2, right? And then we compare again. So, 0 and 2, right? So, that's not going to move. j moves to 1 and again we compare 1 and 9 so that's not going to move again right then we compare 2 or the element at the second position 3 and 5 so that's not going to move as well which brings us out of that inner loop and back to the outer loop where gap is reduced to 1 right so now item of j is 2 which is j is 0 remember and j plus gap is 1. So we are comparing 2 and 1. And so those are swapped. Then j is 1. And we are comparing 1 and 3. So that's not going to move. Right? j is 2. Then we are comparing 3 and 9. Those are not going to move. But when we come to j being 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, then there's going to be a swapping there. Right? And then we end up with the sorted data. Now you can try this by increasing the number of elements and you should get the same results. Right? So for example, if I change this now to, let's say we add some more elements there. Let's add 8, 6, 4, 7. And you should have that properly sorted as well. Right? So you see that's sorted as well. Okay, so that's how the shell sort works. Now moving on to the quick sort. So this one was invented by Sir Charles, full name Charles Anthony Richard Hoare, based on the exchange sort. So you may say, oh, but the bubble sort is an exchange sort and it's really bad. Yes, but this one uses a different algorithm, right? So we'll see that shortly. It's built on the idea of partitions. Cleanest implementation is through recursion. Now we understand what recursion is, I hope. But what about the idea of partitions? So how does quicksort work? That's where we'll get into the idea of partitions. The general procedure is something like this. Select a value called a comparand. Again, how do you determine this value? And we'll come to that a little later. You partition the array into two sections, essentially assigning the comparand as the middle of the array or the middle value. All elements greater than or equal to the comparand will be placed on one side and all elements less than the comparand on the other side. The process is repeated for each remaining section until the array is sorted. Right? So as we through recursion, call the function again and again. We have a new comparand, right, which gives us a new middle for each remaining section. And hopefully this becomes clearer when we write the code. Now let's talk about how we write the code for the algorithm. What does the outcome need to be? We know that we need sorted data. What do we know about the design of the algorithm? Now hopefully you have a fairly good idea from the previous slide about the design of the algorithm and how we can incorporate that into our code. If you don't, no worries, we will look at a visual in the next slide and hopefully it becomes clearer to you. How will the logic flow? Again, we need to look at a visual. So here we are. 
you can see that we have data at the top and I've put the index of each element in brackets, right? Now, the first thing we need to do is, of course, determine the component. So for that, we'll take the index of the first element, which is 0, plus the index of the last element, which is 5, divided by 2, right? So we get 2 as the quotient. We're not worried about the remainder. So in effect, our middle or component will be D. Right, and then we'll need a left and a right variable. Left indicating the zeroth element or index zero and right five. So that is what those will be initialized to. But we need to store the values of left and right because remember we're using recursion and we'll need these values when we're calling that function, when we're calling this function rather recursively. So we store the values of left and right in two separate variables. Right. The next step is we need to check whether all elements on the left of the middle are already sorted. In this case, F and E are not sorted. How do we know? They should be less than D, right? F and E are actually greater than D. What about on the right of D? Well, A, C and B should have been greater than D, but they are not. So they too are not sorted. The next thing we'll do is we will now go through the array. And remember, all this is happening within a loop which will be as long as i, representing left, is less than or equal to g. Right, so first time left is 0, which means i is 0, and right is 5, which means g is 5. g moves backwards, of course, and i moves forwards. So coming now to the elements, so first comparison will be done between f and b, and then we'll have a swap done, right? F moves to B's place and B moves to F's place. Then I will become 1, which means now we're comparing E. And J will become 4, which means we're comparing C. And again, those are swapped. Then I becomes 2, which means we're comparing D. And J becomes 3, which means we're comparing D and A, of course. And then that swap is done. Right, so currently i is 2 and j is 3. The next time in the iteration that is, i will become 3 and j will become 2. At which point we will exit the loop because the loop is running as long as i is less than or equal to j, remember. Right, once we are out of the loop, we have the data of course in that order. And now we'll need to call the function again, right? To do that, we check the value of left versus j. So left is currently zero, remember, j is two. Left is less than two, that is zero less than two. And we use those values to call the function again, right? You can see here, that at the end of the first pass, we already have this part sorted, right? So now we are focusing on this part, if you think about it, right? And therefore that comparison of left and J, right? So now we are calling with left and J, which means now we will have a new middle, right? So these will disappear or rather these will be replaced and our new middle will be C. How do we arrive at that? Remember left is 0 and J is 2. 0 plus 2 divided by 2 is 1. Right? So the element with index 1, which is C, is now the new component or the new middle. And then of course left and right. And again we go through that loop of checking. Right? So in this case we will be swapping C and A. Right? And remember, before that, we are checking whether elements to the left or the middle are already sorted, in which case, uh, in this case rather, this one is sorted, right? So, we will actually move forward and therefore we end up comparing C and A, just for you to understand why we are comparing C and A and not B and C, okay? After the swapping is done, remember the value of I will now change to Two, and the value of j will change to 1, right? Remember, j is moving backwards. Now, again, we'll compare left versus j. 
right? When we compare left versus J, we're comparing 0 to 1. Again, 0 less than 1. And so we call that function again with um, 0 and 1. What happens if this condition is not met? Then we will check right versus I. So we are focusing then on the right of the middle. Right? Now we are focusing on the left of the middle. Right? So when we say 0 and 1, and we call the function again using 0 and 1. The new middle again will be 0 plus 1 now divided by 2. And so these will be replaced now with the middle now being 0. Why? Because remember 1 divided by 2 gives me the quotient 0. Right? And the left will be again 0. And then of course the right. And then the comparison is done. Right? And so we have the data swapped again and finally we end up with the sorted array. Now I hope this is clear to you. Let's now go ahead and we will write the code. We start a new file and hashtag include stdio.h and hashtag include stdlib.h and hashtag include string dot each. And then our function is quick sort. And we pass in char star item and int left and then int right. Okay. And now we'll have our main function. And here you have car str1 equal to int len equal to str len of str1. But in this case, we need the index of the last element, remember? So minus 1. Right? Now again, some printfs here just for understanding the code. And then we call the function passing in the arguments which are str1, 0 for left and len for right. Okay. And then of course printf and exit. Right. Now we write our function. So void quick sort passing in char star item int left and int right. And here we see int middle equal to left plus right divided by 2. Then we have int i is equal to left and int j is equal to right. Okay. Then we have char temp and some printf statements again. That will be easier to understand. So while now i less than or equal to j and within this loop, like I said, we've got to check whether the elements on the left of middle are already sorted. But first some printf statements. So printf and then printf and then we see while item of i is less than item of middle. Right? We're checking to see if they're already sorted. And we have another condition here. i less than right. Okay? So that we don't go over the buffer. 
right i plus plus and we do the same for g so while item of g greater than item of middle and g greater than left here it will be g minus minus and then we check now if i less than or equal to g which means we have to swap right so here we say let's print f i again this is for reference as i said right you can remove all the printf statements once you've understood the code then we print f the item as well so print f or rather the element so print f and now we can do the swap so temp equal to item of i item of i equal to item of g and then item of g equal to temp right and we can print f now we'll increase i and we'll reduce g right so this loop will continue as long as i is less than or equal to g then when we come out here some more printf statements again just for your understanding we can also print write an i so printf right now we check if left is less than g then we'll have a printf statement again for your reference and of course we've got to call quick sort with the arguments item left and g okay then we have another check and we don't need an else here because remember we are calling that function recursively so if it calls that function it's never going to come here if i less than right so control will come here only if this condition is not met right so if i less than right then print f again for your reference and then we call the function quick sort using arguments item i and right okay and that completes our code just check everything's okay so here there's a percentage c missing there and everything else is okay what about here so here we've got to put in left comma g and i comma right okay let's run this now right so now if we look at the output the original array was this our middle is d item of i is f item of g is b right so that's going to be swapped so you can see f and b are swapped right the next is item of i is e item of g is c right and so those are swapped right e and c are swapped as you can see here then we move forward like i said right i is 2 and j is 3 right d and a so those are swapped we have b c a d e f right then we are printing out the values of left and g and right and i and it should have been i actually i haven't written that but you can write it and then we're calling quick sort with left and g 
right as i said we have a new middle c and then we repeat the process until we have the data sorted right so i hope that's clear that's about the quick sort it's used a lot uh, in today's coding world right so it's important to understand how it works and i hope i managed to get that across to you this ends our session for today in the next session we we'll talk about the merge sort till then take care stay safe bye